We're going to move on to Eric Rill versus Alex Grofer. Rill playing blue-white control. Grofer playing black-white mid-range. And, and Eric, up a game, as we predicted earlier, Alex with just a lot of dead draws game one. A lot of great yeah. removal. Yeah, this black-white mid-range deck. I mean, he'll be able to streamline things after sideboard. That's generally how it goes. Game one, most of the time, the mono black or black-white mid-range or black splash green that we see Andrew Tension playing in the elimination rounds. Game one's a little rough, although if you just don't draw the creature removal, you can be fine. But then in the post-board games, when you have Duress to supplement Thoughtseize and Erebos to supplement Underworld Connections, you become much more streamlined. Take a look at Alex's sideboard here. Two Duress, two Deicide. Three Life Bane Zombies, two Last Breast, two Doom Blades, and Underworld Connections, a Blood Baron with Scope and Obsidat, and a Drown in Sorrow. Most of the removal is going to get taken out of his deck, obviously. So you got to love Duress. You have to love uh, some number of Deicides. I'm not sure if he wants one or two, but you have to imagine those are going to come in. Um, you may like Life Bane Zombie. You may not. Uh, it does give you information. And then the 3-1 body isn't terribly good, but it's not irrelevant either. And Underworld Connections, you got to like, and then the Obsidat as well. So definitely some cards that you can board in here that are pretty good. Generally speaking, I like Lifebane Zombie. It's certainly no requirement to bring in against Blue-White, mm -hmm. but a 3-power Intimidate creature is not bad at threatening Jace, not bad at threatening Elspeth, and can attack through Mutavolt. So it's, it's not the best card by any stretch, but it's not the worst either. A lot of it just depends on how many dead cards you have to cut. Nearly all the removal has to go, especially the removal that's not Hero's Downfall. So has to start there, and then uh, if you have slots left over that you need to fill in, I think Life Bane Zombie is totally reasonable. What do we see on real side? Anything in particular that we like? I mean, he's pretty... This is a kind of an old-school matchup, uh, but I'm sure he's played it before and he's got an idea of what he's up against. He's got an Aether Ling, a Dispel, and a Gate, two Gain Saves, two Nyx Fleas for Rams, a Pithing Needle, three Last Breaths, two Celestial Flares, a Deicide, and a Blind Obedience. Uh, I would assume that... We're going to see the Deicide come in, certainly an answer to Underworld Connections and Erebos, uh, especially a good answer to Erebos. Yeah. And the Pithing Needle, for similar reasons, answers the sources of card advantage in the decks. Uh, and besides that, not really a lot. Maybe he wants the Negate. Uh, maybe he wants the Aetherling as well. You see the clock right now. We are about 18 minutes in. Real must have won pretty quickly. He's a pretty fast control player. Yeah. When we had him on camera the last round of the Swiss, or second to last round of the Swiss, rather. He played very efficiently then. We have watched him on camera several times, especially during Legacy Opens. Uh, he's pretty fast overall. Sometimes these blue-white decks, they're going to be slow no matter who's playing them. Yeah, of course. But, but Eric's on the faster side. Well, we're going to be underway in game number two here in just a minute. Dan Muster up a game against Christopher O'Brien right now as well. He won very, very quickly with game number one uh, with Mono Black. Devotion, O'Brien playing blue red control, and then Tentum versus Belfato. Uh, don't have anything for you guys yet there, but as soon as we do know, we'll of course let you know. Only thing that we do know is that Jeff Hoogan will be playing tomorrow morning here in Cincinnati. What a run, especially given how rough the 2014 season has been to him thus far. Yeah. He's on the hunt for some open series points right now, that's for sure. Actually, and the crazy thing is a lot of people in the top eight are. Tenjum actually has a real shot here at the Players' Championship for this, uh, for this season. Uh, Rill probably has the best shot at it, honestly. He's sitting in sixth and really moving up, so he's got a real shot at this thing. I talked to, to Jeff in Detroit after he did poorly in that standard open, and I asked him if he just could not wait to cut the old Gary Gilgate from his deck because Journey to Index was about to come out. Mm -hmm. And he said, I cannot wait. Yeah, just throw them all away. <laughs> I can finally cut them. Don't you know? I, I, I wouldn't finally even, cut them. I wouldn't even cut it. I would just throw them in the garbage. No more. My favorite part about Gary Gil 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 Gilgate is the one that's been trash talked like the most. Yeah. Like all the Gilgates are pretty bad, or like you hate to play them outside of the Azorius one. <laughs> but you know, no one's really you know clowning Izzy Gilgate. Just, I hate Golgari Gilgate more than anything. Well, most most guilds either can operate land heavy or land light. The Golgari Guild needs to draw five lands in a row and then stop Yeah. because of the nature of the deck. Mm -hmm. There's no card advantage, but a lot of expensive cards. So the fact that you're not scrying is particularly pronounced in that guild. You know, Rakdos Guildgate did cause some problems for players playing the Zombies deck mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. Um, but it, w it was a pretty big headache when you needed to tra when you needed to cast like your Thunderball or your Falkmarath Riskrat on time. But nothing to the extent of what Golgari Guildgate has done to certain players 
especially Brian Kibler. Oh, sure. I mean, back when that Ratchet's Guildgate deck was a thing, I just didn't play Ratchet's Guildgate and accepted that I wasn't going to be able to cast my spells sometimes. Sure, sure. <laughs> just making a conscious decision. I'd rather I'd rather lose with cards in my hand than ru lose with a Ratchet's Guildgate. <laughs> at, least, at least I get to keep my dignity in the world where the spells were all in my hand, you know? Real good at playing Flames here. Kick it back over to Griff Rare. Temple of Silence. This is the draw here for Alex. Three mana, Underworld Connection, or a Life Bane Zombie. It'll be a Life Bane. Show you the grip here. You can see Supreme Verdict, two Detention Spheres, a Dissolve, a Negate, and two Hollowed Fountains here for Eric. This is a really good hand for Eric. Post board, black white mid range is all about trying to get some sort of card advantage into play. The same way that Mono Black Devotion plays. Eric has a lot of insurance against that. He has a negate, multiple copies of Det Detention Sphere, and a Dissolve. Very well suited to fight over Erebos or Underworld Connections. Christopher O'Brien did tie things up against Dan Monster, so Blue White Red Control able to get a game as they'll head to the third one. Let's see what Real has for his third turn here. Let's see if he has any interest in casting the Detention Sphere to take care of the Life Main Zombie. I don't think, uh, you know, I think he still needs to keep shields up. Yeah, I think either way, this Hallfound's going to come into play on tap so he can represent Dissolve. So I think he's just kind of pricing it, taking two. Now he's just going to cast the Detention Sphere to get that thing off the table right now. I think you can make an argument for both sides. Yeah, no, it's, it's a close play. Alex draws his card for the turn. It's a Blood Baron of Scopa. With a hand so counterspell heavy, it's it's hard for me to uh, tap out in that spot. But I guess with Alex having Immutavault in play, if Alex just untaps and says, attack you for five, play a land, say go, it's pretty tough too. Yeah, so. you, hate, you hate the way the game's going then. Right. That's great. I'm going to show up to the party. My force reels hand on the second attention sphere. A lot of the times you want to save those spheres for a card like Underworld Connections, but might not have a choice now. If you tapped out the first time, it feels like you had to tap out the second time. Pretty much. Because the game hasn't really changed. And there are four underworld connections after sideboard for Alex, so three in his main, one in his board. I mean, I guess there's an argument for playing Jason minusing it. But I don't think he can hold up counterspell mana this turn. He'd also potentially cast Supreme Verdict, but it feels like he can get better value from that down the line, or at least force Alex to, to play around it a little bit longer. There's D-Sphere number two. So the thing I've the thing I've always felt in this matchup is that you know you can't afford you can't allow desperation even to hit you. Taking six is just too much. It's a lot, especially with no revelation in your hand. Yeah, with no clear path to recover. So you take six and you try to set up like a a, a verdict or something to catch something else. Eh, you know they're not going to extend any farther than that, especially when they know you have it in your hand from the life being zombie. Temple of Silence here for Alex. Actually, a pretty important. For real, if that was not an untapped land, he would have been able to drop down a Blood Baron with Scope of that turn when the shields were down. So that's pretty fortunate for Eric. Eric still has the, the copy of Supreme Verdict in his hand, but... I think you'd rather have things this way, though. Being oh. able to have reactive cards up. Yeah, this is really good. I mean, he get, now he's untapped with all of his counter spells. Pretty big draw there from Alex. Shows the thoughts. He gets the lead off with that. Take a look. You see a couple counter spells, a verdict, and a Jace. Probably Jace. Well, he can either take a counter spell and try to punch through, or take Jace and play the waiting game. But playing the waiting game is is pretty tough here. I mean, he does have a mute vault to pressure Eric with, but you're giving him a lot of time in that yeah, world. That's the only reason that I kind of like playing the waiting game is because the mute vault does exist here. Still, even if you're saying go and trying to build up a hand to go through, if Eric ever draws a, a Sphinx's Revelation or an Elspeth of his own, even if the Revelation is only for three, that puts Alex in a ton of trouble. I'm not quite sure what I would take in this situation. It's pretty hard, actually. I mean, this is the whole, it's the whole game plan right now. Yeah. It's not just about identifying the best card in the hand. It's how do you want the next four or five turns to play out? You see, Grove Fair has taken a long time with this one, but I would be too. This is maybe the most crucial point in the game. Eric navigated this very well. I mean, the back-to-back -back detention spheres set him up to get in a spot like this. A lot of life to play with and a very powerful hand. I 
I don't think. What, what cards could it not be? Probably like negate. Ooh, it's going to take verdict. Okay. I guess, you know, the thing here, if you're real, is that whatever card my opponent takes in the situation, it's very loud, like, okay, they're trying to accomplish something specific. Here comes the Muta Vault. Yeah. By taking Verdict, you're just basically saying, okay, I'm trying to resolve something specific and make sure that you don't have an answer to it. I think he may have picked up an Aetheling for the turn. See if real still going to be patient here if he's going to drop Jace. He will drop Jace down. Probably going to minus this. See if he wants to go up or down. He wants to go down. Looking for a land. So you got to dissolve. You've got another Jace Detention Sphere. Hmm. So he doesn't find lands, but how do you split this if you're Grofer? Well, uh, the issue now is, do you think... How likely is it that Eric finds another uh, Supreme Verdict? Because it's possible that Blood Baron just steals this game. Yeah. Given the context of his hand, that's very realistic. So you care probably the most about Jace if you're trying to steal it, but Detention Sphere's the most powerful card in the abstract as it answers Elspeth and a bunch of other potential threats. And Real just passes it back over to Alex, who will take a draw. Desecration Demon. Hmm. And there's Elspeth. How good is Elspeth here? It doesn't seem great. Not in the face of this Jace. I mean, yeah. you know that Eric's going to get to untap here. Detention Sphere, the Jace or the Elspeth, rather, plus Jace, and then you can't kill it. And you may not be able to resolve na anything next turn, either. If he draws on land, it's huge. Yeah. And there's the D-Sphere, with the ability to leave up negate right now. You gotta imagine he's gonna take Jace up, and yeah, this is... It's almost like Alex walked in this situation, but he knew this situation was coming? Because he just gave him the D-Sphere. See Blood Bear in the draw here for Alex. That assumes to me that he's okay with this exchange. Here's a Blood Baron. It's not even clear to me that Eric needed to detention spare the Elspeth that turn. He could have sat with his counterspell mana up, yeah. waited until he drew another land, or a Supreme Verdict, and just ticked up Jace the whole way through. We're really going to draw planes for the turn. Going to tick on down here. So there's a D Sphere. There's a Rev. There's an Island. Real very smart not to play his land yet either. I think this is a situation where I would still want the revelation. I think so, too. Uh, if Eric's able to find a Supreme Verdict, this game gets very easy. He's got some turns to play with here. And a lot of powerful tools in his hand. Mm -hmm. Sir obviously can't take care of the Blood Baron. Sir can take care of the three soldier tokens, which is pretty whatever. The one thing I have to keep in mind here, too, is that that is the fourth sphere for Eric, so... If he does put that one to the bottom, he's basically out of that effect. He does have one banishing light, but... And he's given this a lot of thought, too. It's hard to pass up on a revelation. Yes. Especially when you have one card that gives you such a clear route to victory. Yeah, he's taking the rev. Cannot blame him. It's a hard card to pass up here. Yep. You gonna play the planes just past the turn back over to Alex, who's gonna untap and take a draw. Mana Confluence was the draw there. He's got Desecration Demon, another copy of Blood Baron in his hand right now. Don't forget about that Muta Vault within the lands, too. Now, this is a spot where Alex may want to start Oops. playing. <laughs> into the counter spells a little bit to at least tie up Eric's banner. Yeah, make it so they just can't rev. Right. Because both players know what the game is about right now. If Eric's able to find a Supreme Verdict, Alex is in a lot of trouble. But Alex can win the game fairly quickly. Well, let's see where this attack's going to go. One soldier over there. A bunch of attackers coming straight at Rill. Looks like he's going to send two this way, just in case of a card like Azori's Charm or something like that. Wants to make sure he gets Jace dead. How much does that point of damage matter here? That's a big question. So that makes him fall to eight, so that nine. So everything in play, plus the Mutable next turn is still lethal. Okay, so nine is important. That's important. Yep. That's important. See if Griffin wants to drop anything else on the table. 
he's almost incentivized not to extend any further just because Verdict was so, would be so good. Yeah, there's a reasonable chance Eric doesn't even counter this because he needs to find Sphinx of Revelation anyway. And he's facing a lethal attack next turn, so. Almost. I mean, he can counter it, play Jason plus it, and make it know that go at it next turn, but it's not clear if he's making enough forward progress in that world. Decisions, decisions. Do you dissolve, take your scry, or do you rev for three and hope for the best? It's hard to pass up dissolve here for me, because you can play more turns. And he still gets to effectively draw a card in, in terms of finding Supreme Verdict for next turn. Top card's going to go to the bottom. Refrere with a Blood Baron and a Hero's Downfall in his hand. Real going to take a draw. He's looking for Supreme Verdict. Finds an Island. Island's not so bad. He can rev for enough to stay alive. I mean, does he even does he consider even something like going for Aether Link here, assuming that Alex can't kill it? No. I think your other options are too good. Playing Jace, leaving up Dissolve, stuff like that. I think your other options are way too good right now. There is Jace. Going to take it up, pass the turn back. Hero's Downfall is going to get fired off, and I think Real's probably going to want to protect this. This has to be worth the counter spell here. Yeah. I think Jace is too important right now. I mean, the attack is lethal, so. Well, with the Jace trigger going up, it's not. Oh, okay, does it, okay, it doesn't carry yeah, over. Yeah. yeah, it's just locked in now. Yeah. So assuming that he fires a Mutavault, if we attack here for four, Blood Baron would deal three. If Mutavault would deal one, the tokens wouldn't do anything. And that's why I think protecting Jace is so important. Because even if that's Grofair's turn of activate my Mutavault and your Blood Baron and try to hit you or your Jace, Jace won't die. It'll go down to one. And this is just going to buy you more time to find the verdict that you're looking for that's going to be the, the backbreaker in the game. Yeah, assuming that we get through this turn, it's saving five damage and then ten damage the next turn. Yeah. You know, it begs the question if he, if he should dissolve or negate that turn. Like, which one should he use? Because dissolve allows him to use all of his mana and scry versus negate. This is a thought seize. That's pretty good right now. Uh -huh. Because that revelation was so important. Really, really good top deck there from Alex. Imagine this rev is just going bye bye here. Yeah, it's tough to take anything else, right? Oh, there that goes. Left with dissolve and aetherling. Grofair going to send Blood Baron. See if Rill remembers the trigger on Jace. Poor time to forget it. Every damage counts right now. It's going to go straight to the red zone. It's going to put real down to six. Will he drop this Blood Baron? Okay. All right. He's, That's he's, really aggressive. He's putting him on. He's putting him on Supreme Verdict or Bus, uh -huh. and Eric gets a lot of looks at it. Pithy Needle. Miss number one. And it's not even to say that if he doesn't, if he doesn't find Supreme Verdict, the game isn't over. That's a thing. Because he can just, I mean, this turn he can pretty simply just take up Jace, play Aetherling, and pass. Grafer has no cards in his hand. And Jace, Jace colds the tokens. Uh -huh. Aetherling colds one of the one of the Blood Barons. They'll just eat it anyway. And then Blood Baron plus Mutavault would deal four points of damage. It'll be a two. So this would actually force Grofair to draw a removal spell this turn. Yep. And I like forcing him to do it this turn. It's got to be this turn. It can't be discard. It has to be exactly a removal spell this turn to win the game. And if he doesn't draw it this turn, this game is really, really tough for him to win. He picks up a, draw, he, he picks up a Mutavault. Eric barely hanging on here, but he may have turned the corner. And he has a needle in hand to potentially shut down yeah. something something significant down the line. Shut down the mutavolts. Right. Like if if Grofair plays the other mutavolt, I'm I'm cool with the muta I'm killing the mutavolts with the uh, with the needle. Yeah. And it shuts off his own, but that's not important right now. Pretty impressive for Eric to be able to navigate the game into this spot. Yeah. And with the Needle shutting off the Mutavaults, and if he's able to find a Supreme Verdict and he can blink out his Aetherling, you can't imagine Grofair is able to come back from that. It would take one heck of a series of draws. Yeah, with, with Aetherling active and Jace with a bunch of counters on it mm -hmm. still. A Needle to take care of the last relevant thing that Alex has in play.
have taken one from uh, Mana Confluence, I think. So Alex trying to see here if there's any other way for him to proceed with this turn. Because saying go just seems really rough here. Nah. I don't like saying go. Quick update for you guys. Andrew Tenjum does defeat Michael Belfato. Two games to one. So Mr. Tenjum, who is in the top 16 of our leaderboard, he moves on as well. What a big weekend for people who are chasing points. Jeez. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Tenjum is another player that we regularly have on camera quite a bit. Yeah. Just didn't get around to him this weekend, but I'm sure we'll we'll fix that in the top four. In we go. Yeah, I'm gonna eat this. But don't make sure you don't forget that chase trigger. So Blood Baron bites the dust. Yeah, Grofair's gonna gain some life. Tenjin Hoogland waiting for us tomorrow morning. There's the Muta Vault. Reel at two. Turning the corner. We'll see what he finds. The planes. And now, if that needle gets set to these Muta Vaults, Alex is no longer in a position to attack for really anything of significance, uh -huh. assuming this Jace pluses. And we're not that far away from Jace going ultimate. Muta Vault's his name with the needle. Not much of a surprise there. Christopher O'Brien, Karanos, Firemind's Foresight. A little deck building from Tamahiro Saito. Mm -hmm. Gets the job done. If you guys don't follow Tamahiro Saito on Twitter, I'd recommend that you do. He posted like 20 constructed decks or something. He is a font of standard inspiration. Yeah. Christopher O'Brien obviously using that to his advantage. Defeats Dan Muster two games to one. O'Brien's through as well. And Eric's trying to shift gears here. I had a feeling we might see this. Anthony can certainly come in in this situation. I mean, he's getting mighty aggressive with it, but, it, I mean, it can do that right now. Well, there's nothing. Uh, Alex just has a Blood Baron as the only thing in play that can attack with any sort of effectiveness. Yeah, picked up a third Muta Vault. Nice. <laughs> Puts that directly into play. Nice. <laughs> Muta Vault would be great here most times. The one needles in these sideboards, they come up a lot. Yeah. Ah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I can promise you that much. Hold your horses. Yeah. They're just Carlos lands now. Um, Blood Baron has to stay back on defense. Real has, I think, Patrick officially turned the corner here. Yeah, this has been a beautiful game of magic. Okay. Going to fire this up. Going to come in here for... A decent amount of damage. Pump three times. Nathan's working with the light tool. He's got a blue to be able to blink it out. To be able to block Blood Baron. Two turn clock also. Mm -hmm. There's Azorius Guildgate. Going to take this up. Just wants to make sure he doesn't forget anything. Can play pretty calmly. There goes Aetherling. Come on back. Has his all of it. The ready. Grofair draws a card. That's a duress. Shh. I think... There's nothing bad that happens if he counters this. Because Blood Baron can't come through. The soldier tokens are stuck. Yeah, Alex so. has no hand. Yeah. So, this is this just, just a free scry. Just a free scry here. Real draws his card. Anything really changed here? Not really. I think he's still better plusing Jace than tutoring. Yeah. Most likely. I mean, he does have access to the opponent's deck list, but I don't think there's any reason to do any tutoring here. But you could get like an Elspeth out of his deck. Yeah, an Elspeth then... of his own. It's not yeah. bad. Uh oh, he's he's grabbing at those dice. <laughs> <laughs> he can get an Elspeth out of his own deck and and opes that out of out of Alex's potentially. I guess he could also. I mean, there's a lot of different things he can do with the ultimate, right? He could go get a Jace out of his own. He can go get a backup Jace and the Elspeth out of Grosser's sure. deck. I think that's the kind of thing that's swinging in his mind. It's actually kind of dangerous, the Jace Ultimate. Like, just because he doesn't really have to change gears right now, but the Ultimate is like, well, look at this cool thing I can do. Yeah. Chances are, if you use me, you're probably going to win. So, I think he just wants to be a touch careful here. Yeah, it's definitely, it's at least worth contemplating here. But if he is able to get another Jace and reset 
the plus anyway, then it's a freebie to go get something out of Alex's deck. Yeah. Really going to start by making this unblockable. Coming on in. Get you for a bunch. And again, Grofer has no cards in his hand, so Real can safely attack here for eight. Going to blink it out. Don't forget to use that chase. All right, we're going to use the ultimate. Let's go hunting. Come on, it's pretty tough to pass up an ultimate. Yeah, it's sort of hard. <laughs> Hopes that's pretty tempting here. Elspeth over there is pretty tempting as well. Yeah, I, you know, any Planeswalker is fine here, basically, as long as this isn't memory adept. It's going to go with Supreme Verdict instead, it looks like. Can you do that? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can play them for, anywhere. For, oh, yeah, for a non-land card. Yeah. Non-land card, sorry. For some reason, I thought it might have to be a permanent. That's all. No, no, no. You can tie it on yeah, activate chases also. Well, you're not much. allowed to go get counter spells because you have to cast them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to yeah, cast but you can cards. still go get so spells. So first I was thinking you just get permanents and put them into play because oh. oftentimes people just go get permanents. Well, because the most powerful thing to get in spots like this are more planeswalkers usually. Yeah. Because if your chase has gone ultimate, it means your opponent's incapacitated in some fashion. <laughs> yeah. So just go get more planeswalkers. But you can get spells, and Eric has gotten Supreme Verdict. And it opens to that as well. Alex is going to draw a card. I think it's going to be his last one of these elimination rounds. It's a swamp and an extension of the hand. Eric Rill going to win this match over Alex Grofer.